yeah, yeah. You ready to do this? I'm ready. You ready to do this? How ready are you? I'm really ready. You re <laughs> you you really really ready? Then <laughs> then inspect this. I, mean, I, I I don't know what they expect. So I'm just gonna say I'm ready. I mean I can, I think I can handle it. You you think you can handle it? Yep. Ain't much I can't handle. I'm flatbed for life, baby. Oh no, nah, you 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 is not a flatbed <laughs> driver. Get out of here. You you flatbed for real? Or you just saying Yeah. Oh, no, I'm flatbed. Oh my God. Can't believe that you're you you And flatbed. I'm in North Dakota and it's like six degrees. Man, you doing the damn thing. You are doing it. Salute to you, man. But I can't Salute I can't you. hear you too good. Can you hear me now? Hold on. Oh wait, yeah. wait, wait a minute. I know why you can't hear me. I know why you can't hear me, because the microphone fell. That's why. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's much better. That's yeah. much, much better. What's yeah. going on, guys? Lockout, man. In the truck on the 30 for another podcast interview for today. What's going on, guys? If you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, hit that bell. And while you're hitting the bell, make sure you hit that all so you can get all of the videos when I drop. It just works like that. And as I said before, it's all part of the algorithm. It's, it's, it's YouTube, you know. It's, it's not going to go away, man. It's not going to go away. Everybody is joining this platform. I just don't know why. But uh, I'm back. I'm back. Look. If you guys interested in coming on the platform, you know, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? I give you guys the spotlight, you know, to show what you guys could do. Today, I have a beautiful young lady. Her name, I'm, I'm looking at her, I'm, I'm looking at her YouTube page right now as we speak. Her name is Bernadette Lashane. Now, why why do you have to have my name? I, I don't understand that. My name is Lashane, but 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 you you had to take my name and chop it up and and and, and come out with your own name Lashane. Let's welcome Bernadette Lashane Journey on Purpose to the show. What is going on with you young lady? Nothing much, nothing much. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming on, man. That's what's up. That's what's up. So tell the people out there a little bit about yourself. All right. Um, I'm a flatbed driver with Prime and uh, got started, got my CDL in May, uh, went out and didn't, didn't really enjoy reefer too much. So I went back into training uh, for 15,000 more miles with a flatbed trainer and uh, decided to go flatbed. So I got my own truck. In September, and I've been out ever since. Okay, now key word here, <laughs> key word here, prime and flatbed. Prime got a That's flat. Right. Prime got a flatbed division. Yeah, Prime has um, all three divisions: flatbed, tanker, and reefer. Wait, yeah, I'm I'm familiar with the reefer. I'm familiar with the tanker. Flatbed though? Yeah. Yeah, we got a strong flatbed department. Okay, okay. Now guys, mm -hmm. this is a female flatbedder. There's not too many. <laughs> now wait, wait, wait. Let me let me let me draw you guys a picture. Number one, this is a female. Number two, a strong black female. Number three, she's a truck driver. Number four, she's a flatbedder. You hear what I'm saying? Put all that together, and you got Miss Bernadette right here, man. Man. That's right. Journey on purpose. Journey on purpose. Man. Man, tell tell these guys out here what, what, what life is like uh, being a female flatbedder. You know, it's uh, it's it's okay. It's good, you know, because flatbed, flatbed division itself is kind of close-knit. And then flatbedders are like, you know, real close. I mean, they really do help each other out and stuff. So 
when they see me out there, you know, they just, I mean, they just gentlemen, and they just always asking if there's anything they can help. They're always showing me a little trick here and there um, because there are some challenges that I have because I am a female in flat that I can't do it the way they do it. You know, I got to figure out some shortcuts or some, you know, some different ways of trying to try, trying to meet the challenges yeah. of flat bed. And so, you know, they've just been great. I just, I can't say enough good things about uh, the flat bed drivers that I run into at the different receivers and shippers, mm-hmm. you know, on a daily basis. Man. Miss Bernadette, what, how, how old are you, Miss Bernadette? <laughs> how old are you? I, I really, I really said I was. I don't like talking about my age, but I am 50 years old. I turned 50 years old January. 15th. Hell yeah! Hold on, let me give you an applause for that right there. 50 years yeah. old, congratulations! So you, uh, 1969? 1970. Oh, 1970. Okay, one, well, a year down, but still, because I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm 69, so I'll be 51 this year. Man, listen here. I mean, I I am just beside myself right now just to find out that you that you are flat better, man. Wow. And yeah. uh, and a 50-year-old flat better. So, what and made a you cute one too? Don't and, forget that part. A cute 50-year-old flat better that feel 35. Uh, she said still 35. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> 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 No, oh, because it's a physical, man. you know, flatbed is physical. Flat, flatbed is so physical, and it's such a challenge. But, you know, my, my my age didn't even come across my mind as much as did I have the ability to just do, you know, do the job and lift the tarps and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I wanted to be in that physical arena because I am getting old, and I want to stay in shape, and I didn't just want to sit around bumping docks, you know. And so this keeps me going. This keeps me out inside the truck moving around in it and i feel great that's man that's what's up and it's and this is something that was this was this something that you wanted to do i mean what you was doing before you got into trucking before i got into trucking i sold cars uh for about 10 years and then i worked in pest control for about 15 years for orphan pest control i was a sales manager there so i've been in sales you know most of my life all right, so so fifteen, ten, you say ten, right? At the at the car dealership, yes. so twenty five, mm-hmm. so twenty five years of uh of doing corporate. I'm, I want to say corporate America, of doing corporate right. America. Uh, of course, uh, uh, of course, the financial, uh, the financial, uh, took care of you throughout the years, but uh, what. What made you get into trucks? I mean, what 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 made you get into uh, truck driving? Yeah, I was, you know, truck driving is something I always had my eye on, but I was just so intimidated. And um, I just, I guess I was just, I didn't have the confidence to think that I could do it. Plus, I had I had a daughter. I was a single mom. And um, I had a mother that was, was sick, you know, over the years that I had to kind of tend to, not all the time, but, you know, on and off. And so, you know, those are the things I think that really held me back the most. Um, being a single mom now within trucking is a little bit different than it would have been for me, you know, 10 years ago where you can actually bring your children with you. You can you go home a little bit more often. And, you know, I just think it's a, trucking in general is a little different than yeah, it had the, been over yeah, the years. The, yeah, the, the, the dynamics has, has really mm-hmm. changed. I mean, you know, I... I I'm a fan of uh, old school trucking movies, and I, I watch those movies, and they they show that the that the driver have their kids out there with them on a, on the roads, and the, you know the kids is really having a having a good time with their parent. But now you know now the way trucking is now is is it's not like that. Now some some drivers do have their kids on uh, on the trucks with them but you know sometimes you know you got to make sure you with a company that can that can fill your background so that so that they'll be all right with you with your kids uh on the truck yeah. some some is yeah. some as young as some used to be as young as uh five two three four five years old but now they got to be like like eight nine ten you yeah, know. yeah. And be and how yeah. how old is your kid, if I may ask? 
now my daughter is going to be my daughter is going to be 27 in March, so, and uh, oh, I can't okay. I can't even believe that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. She, um, yeah. So you know, she was in school when she was in school. I wanted to make sure you know she don't went to college. She just graduated with a master's. So I was doing that. I was totally like focused on her and trying to get her through that. And then my mom passed away about two years ago, and then I realized I'm like, you know what? My daughter's grown. My mom is gone. This is a perfect opportunity for me um, to do me. And when when I started thinking about some things that I want to do, trucking was the first thing and the highest thing on my list. It really was. Okay, okay. Uh, my yeah. condolences out to you for your mom uh, losing. Oh yeah, thank you. Lose, losing uh, losing a loved one can definitely uh, can definitely hurt somebody, especially if you're in this industry. Um, you know, you lose a loved one and you're not there right then and there to, you know, be there with them when they go. It's kind of it's kind of hard. This is like also yeah. one of the most depressing industries. Not don't let people don't don't let people, you know, gash your head up. This I mean, this is this is a lonely man's life right here. But you you still can make something of it and what you did you did the same thing that i did you know my son he's grown he's uh graduating college this year uh me and his mother separated and uh and i i decided five years ago that let, let me give trucking a try you know what i'm saying let me let me mm -hmm. see you know let me go out here and go to places that i've never been to before you know what i'm saying and, right and right that's that's where i'm at now um man man so your so your mom's passed two uh two years ago um mm -hmm. how how did that how how did that affect you well, I was—I mean, that that a mother passing is just so so. I don't know. It's just like a to total disconnect, you know. Um, that's the person that that knows you the best. That's the person that you know speaks into your life, and and for that person to be gone, it's it's hard. Even at my age, you know, I don't know how young people lose their parents and and they make it, you know, because even at you know forty-eight years old, I found myself just being devastated, you know. Right. Um, but I took a year off and I, and I and I got my head together and I decided, you know, um, that I was going to do something, uh, you know, for me and enjoy myself. And like you said, to give myself opportunity to travel, see all 48. And so I, I got started getting excited about it. And that really helped me, um, you know, to, to move forward and not just come in a truck. And I'm, that's not just what I wanted to do. I wanted to come in the truck yeah. and, and I, wanted, I made so many people, so many young people that want to start a business with an entrepreneurial spirit. And I wanted to do something at my Winning. age that was just a little different and show Winning. people that, or show young people what could be done and what's possible. You yes. know, because if I had done this when I was 22, 23 years old, I would, I mean, good God, I wouldn't have to work at all. Exactly. See, that's that's another thing too about what uh what trucking that can offer, offer young people. They can come in, they can come in it while they're young build their finance, yep. their financial background, and then they could take that, you know, maybe five, ten years. They can they can take that, what they saved up, and continue to build with, with right. what they saved up in trucking. They wouldn't necessarily have to, you know, have trucking to be an end-all, be-all thing. They can use it That's as right. a stepping stone. And once they, a stepping stone. And once they get, you know, once they get, to where they need to be to 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 make other things happen boom they they can they also still got you know if they still keep up their cdls uh they could still have a fallback plan you know what i'm saying if you know maybe they could maybe you could start your business you know come home for a year start your business up make you know make sure that the business flourish and everything make sure you get the right people in place to run that business while you're away you know it, exactly it's all part it's all part of the plan you know it's a plan that you you guys need to put together and when y'all put it together y'all need to just follow through with it not everybody follows through with it though for real <laughs> that's exactly right you know i see so many truck drivers and you know, been in the biz business 30 years and don't have two pennies to run together. Exactly. And, you know, it's sad. It's a sad thing when you know you've been driving all of a million man, a million mile man that don't have, 
you know, even a even a bank account that got a hundred dollars in it. I mean, this is really reality. I've got family members that's been in trucking for years, and they just never made it work for them. They they survived, you know, they took care of their family, but they don't have. They can't stop driving. They can't. They they don't have anything else to fall back on. Exactly. And so, you know, that's one of the things that if if I could get some of the younger people to, to, to look at my channel and to kind of see what's available and what the opportunities are, not for these different carriers because they already made their money, mm -hmm. but that you could get in here and then you could do different things. And I mean, you, sky's really the limit. It really is. But you got to understand what you're involved with. And, and understanding the truck business is difficult because it's so broad. Now, Bernadette, in the beginning, when we started, you like I said, you said keywords. You said you said flatbed. You said female. You also said prime man, prime ink, <laughs> prime ink. So wow. the company, the, the company that you rocking out with, did did you go to school through Prime, or did you get your license before you went uh, before you came to Prime? No, I went to um, I went to prom for my for my permit as well as my license. Now you can't get your permit there. You, I think you have to get your permit in the state that you live in. Right. When I came through last year, I was able to get my permit and my and my CDL right there. Yeah, they they prime. Look, I mean, I'm I'm hearing so so much good, bad, and ugly with prime. <laughs> I mean, it's just you know. It, you know, it's it's all about it's all about drivers' experience with uh with any company where you at. You probably might have one driver that that hates the company, then you probably have another driver that loves the company, and then you might have another driver that's that's on the fence. You know what I'm saying? He right. either, he either love it or you hate it, but still, Prime is right. not going nowhere. So when when you came into class, um. How many how how many people how how many people was there in your class and what was the end result when everybody got their licenses? Um, I think I had about forty five people in my class that week. Um, at the end of the week, maybe three or four of them were sent home. They didn't pass a drug test or they had something going on medically or you know, whatever, but the majority of the, the majority of, the, of us did make it through, you know. So what was um, and what, then what was the oh, final count? Go ahead. What, what was the final count? I was I'm gonna say forty of us. Forty of us made it on through. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. That's what's yeah. up. That's what's up. So of course you had to go out with a trainer. So yeah, during the training process, what was your experience during the training process with Prime? You know, I'm so glad that you're asking me these questions now because hindsight is 2020, mm -hmm. and like you said, it's the good, the bad, and, and the, the ugly. ugly. And the and ugly. I think if in that whole process, I probably experienced all of that. And if you would have talked to me, maybe when I first got there, I would have been like, "Oh, it's good." When I went through TNT, I would have been like, "Oh, it's bad." And then when I went through it again, you know, through about a thirty thousand miles, because that's all I needed, I would have been like, "This is ugly," you know. Because it's hard to be on a truck with a person mm -hmm. that you don't know, a stranger. Mm -hmm. And um, but the the outcome of it all, you know, I kept my mind on the end result. It's just like basic training when you go in the military. You know, basic training is hard. But once you get past basic training, you know, AIT is a little bit better. And then, you you know, you go into your duty station and you make it. And I kept my mind on that because it's hard. It was hard for me. And I'm older. And it was no easier to be the age that I am and the maturity level that I have than it is for anybody that would have been young coming through because it strips you down. You know, you gotta you gotta humble yourself. You gotta you gotta suck. You gotta bite your tongue. You know, all of mm -hmm. those things. But at the end of the day, you know, I was able to come through that. But I did not enjoy my TNT trainer um, at all. And but I knew that she had something that I needed. You know, and so I sucked it up and I finished. Oh, and then you I got on the truck and then I. Oh, you said she. So you, so you had a female trainer. What, what was the experience yes. like? I hated it. I mean, it just it just was not. We did not. We were not compatible. You know, she she was a female, and mm -hmm. I would have probably did better with a male. Um, but you know, I didn't want to go in there saying, "Can I have a man?" You know, <laughs> that would have been looking crazy. <laughs> but I knew. Ow. I just know. <laughs> I know that I get along with guys better. 
you know, when it comes to instruction and training and things like that, I have a better experience over the years just with male trainers. But I, I, I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. She was younger than me, um, oh, okay. you know, but not, but not young, but not young, but younger. Um, but just, just, you know, it's it's a money thing, you know, and she was trying to get her money, and I can't be mad about that. Um, she was good as far as being a driver and stuff, but as far as a trainer, she she lacked a lot of um, a lot of crucial skills that could have made it better. So you, you know? say so um, so you say she was so she was a uh, so she was a lease driver. She was a what? She, she was a leaser. Yeah, she leased a truck. Uh, okay. See, I had two. I had two. The first girl that I had, she was my age, and she was real. She was the bomb. I mean, she had her own truck. She was an owner operator. She was in the process of purchasing her truck, not leasing it, but buying it. Okay. Um, but when I got on her truck, she had some issues with her truck, and so it was it was delaying my train and my thirty thousand miles because I wasn't playing about that. Get these thirty thousand miles and be done. So when her truck broke down, I got off her truck, which was my mistake, and I got on another another person's truck who her and I didn't see eye to eye. But I did the majority of the miles with her anyway, and then I finished. So I had two different trainers that were both in two different positions. One was a own, trying to own her truck, and that girl, she was leasing her truck. Um, and she didn't really have a, a plan afterwards. The mm -hmm. first one did. She was going to purchase her truck, and her thing was to work two or three years afterwards with no truck payment at all, mm -hmm. put that money to the side, and retire. That is what I appreciated about her. She was business-minded. She had been in it a little while, and she was older, and she knows, you know, when you're a little bit older, you know you got a plan for the future. This is not... You know, when you get 65, 70 years old, you're not going to be jumping up and down in no truck. So she was making serious plans to be that, you know, kind of further along in life than some of the younger people that were coming in. Okay, that's that's what's up. So so you went through two you you went through two drivers. How long Prime, in my opinion, really keeps you guys for an extenuating long period of time. How long in in days and time wise was the actual training from start to from start to finish? Okay, um, I got I got my uh, permit in on May seventh, and I got my truck September fifteenth. So, you know, May, June, July, and August, I was in training. Got back to the to the um, terminal in early part of September and went through that process. Took about a week. Um, but if I if my trainer and that was also add an additional fifteen thousand miles on on me, which would have put me equivalent to what they have to do now about fifty thousand miles. But um, it's long. It's it, I don't know if it's too long or, or not because I don't know what other you know drivers are capable of doing when they get in a truck with a trainer. Mm -hmm. But I knew that I was trying to get everything I could get, um, you know, at that, at, while I was on the truck. And what happened, what happens in the training process is because they are, you know, it, they being paid and everything, you know, they not in no hurry. They want you to stay on there as long as you can, especially if you drive pretty good, because mm -hmm. the longer you on there, the more they make. But the, but the trainee, we want to get them miles and get off. Right. Y'all you know? want to hurry and up and get it over with. Right, and that's where the problem comes in. That so you, you know? felt so you um, felt like some of these other drivers that that these uh, that these trainees, especially lease ops, really take advantage of you guys. I, I don't think I was being taken advantage. Of, well, I don't think I was being taken advantage of. I think it's an opportunity for us both. You know, um, I get to train with you. You get to teach me, but you also get to make money. You know, and I get to learn. So it's a give and take type of thing. The problem comes in when I'm finished my 30,000 miles or now if the person has finished their 50,000 miles, let me go. Don't don't come back saying now I got to work on this and work on that because you should you had 30,000 miles to teach that to me. If yeah. I don't know it yet, it ain't my fault, you know. So it is long and it's grueling, especially towards the end when you close and you know you want to get off that truck. But you don't want to get off too soon either, you know. You don't want to get off and not know what you're doing. And so, I don't know. It's just, it's just what it is. I mean, you gotta just make it through that part. That's why when I see the videos of, the, of the, a lot of girls 
t- talking about what's going on on the truck and this and that. And I'm like, you know, if I could just say, hold on, you know, if you can, don't don't put yourself in danger and that kind of stuff. But if it's just a mindset, set your mind to finish and get off that truck and get your own. Because once you get your own truck, it's like night and day. It's it's totally different. Yeah, it totally is. Different. It is different. It's di- especially it's different when you get, you know, like when you get finished with your schooling and everything that they teach you in school about trucking what you want to do when you get there what you want to do is is take your right hand all right take your left hand raise down that window take the right hand and put everything that you learned in school (laughs) in that right hand make sure that window is down now when 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 the window's down you don't want to you want to make sure that you ain't ain't nothing out there we don't want to litter we don't want to litter too much, but you take the right <laughs> hand and you just throw everything out that window right there. And then raise it back up because I tell you, you're going to retrain when you get out here. Yeah. yeah when you when you backing up through cones and alley docking and all like that, it's a hell of yep. a lot different than backing up between two tractor trailers and hitting and trying to hit that dock. It is not hot. Now, you don't have to do that much backing. You're a flat better, right? Yeah, flat better. Um, I mean, I got to do my share of backing because I still got to go to truck stops and sleep and that kind of stuff. But um, for the most part, a lot of the receivers, a lot of the shippers, they'll load you. When you pull in, you get loaded and you pull right on out. So in that respect, it is a lot, a lot easier. Um, and I and when I went on the 15,000 miles training with my male instructor, uh, that was that was great, a, a great experience because it was very different than Reefer. Um, and flatbeds hours and stuff are a lot different, too, because most of the shippers and receivers are Monday through Friday. Mm-hmm. You know, um, they won't they won't load you after three. You know, so there's some time. There's more like business hours type stuff going on, mm-hmm. and it gives you a chance. It's a slower pace. And for me, um, w- when I was with him, it was a lot more time to really learn how to do, you know, the the, the, the part that consists of flatbed, but also driving. You know, it, a guy teaching you how to drive and a female teaching you how to drive. I don't know. It to me, it's just different. I couldn't teach my daughter how to drive. I was scared to death. <laughs> you know, it was just something about it. I, I couldn't do it. I had to let her uncle do it. So in the truck, it's a, it's way different learning from a female than it is from a man. I'm sorry. I don't know if it's nerve or what it is, but he he really was more patient. You know, he was really, he the man. That my, my man trainer is the man, and I give him much respect because, he told me everything I needed to know about driving as well as flatbed. Now, and you know, we got along well. Now, I, I, I don't want to bring up this ugly situation that that recently had uh, that was over at Prime. Uh, we talked, we we talked about the money bad situation. Um, mm-hmm. Being that you was with a male trainer, uh, and you say he was he he was the best, uh, he was the best at what he done. He gave you he gave you the respect that you deserved and and did what he needed to do to train you to make sure that you was properly trained, right? Yes, he did. I mean, he he was all business, you know, and and I appreciated that and and I just had a great experience. I don't I hate that um, you know, that anybody that had anything different than what I experienced with a male cuz I think it's possible for men and women to come together and train and learn from one another. Um, I don't think that it should be banned or any, you know, they was talking about not allowing it and some should a man train a woman and vice versa. And, and I think that the answer is yes. I think that they should be allowed um, to train a woman and, a, and a, a woman should be allowed to train a man if, if that's what they're doing, training. Not none of the, not none of the bullshit, right? Exactly. Not none exactly. of, not none of the bullshit. So, What's, yeah. do you do you have a do you have a thought or do you have a do you have an opinion on uh on that situation or are you familiar with it i mean i had an opinion i did a video about it i saw a lot of the youtubers that um, oh, wait, um did wait. Videos. you said you did a video on it because i lot- mean i didn't i didn't do it about him i was just starting to talk 
and I mentioned it because that was the same day out of the same weekend it happened. So I mentioned him in my video, and then I realized that a lot of people um, took their videos down, but I never took mine down because I felt like um, – I think my my video is called "Follow Your Gut" or something like that. Hold on, I'm, um, to, I'm I'm bringing I'm I'm bringing it up right now, trying to trying to find. Yeah, there it is, Prime. Follow your gut, right here. Yeah, I talked about that because when 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 first of all they came out and did videos about what the situation. So exactly, they would not have known anything about the situation had they not. What's up, YouTube? Uh, this Monday morning, morning, and I know I had it. promised a when, video. In Crazy Bags, um, you know, in the instance with him, I watch his videos. I follow his channel because he's a great he's a great trainer on video. I don't know about in the truck and all of that, but just on video, he's very transparent about you know his his income, um, the loads and everything. So I follow him religiously. He he's the one that taught me basically about fixed costs. You know those type of important things about leasing. So when he came out with that, I was I was like, man, what? And uh, but then I watched his video and he said something about he knew when he went in, it, it, it could potentially be a problem. Now that was the part that I talked about in my video because I just said you got to follow your gut. When you think you're gonna have a problem, chances are you're gonna, you're have, gonna a have a problem. Follow that gut. That gut never lies. That That's gut right. will so, never lie to you. The gut will never yep. lie. You follow you yep. you you feel that is something is not right. Yep. You follow that gut and that that gut will tell you, nah, bruh, this this is this is not the not the right yeah, thing to do. You need to slow down. Yeah, you yeah, need you to need pump to, your brakes. You, you need, need to, to stop. Go a different direction. A lot of a lot of people now that that brings up that that brings up this next question. Now I always said that Prime has the book of YouTube. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like everybody over at Prime has a YouTube channel. Do mm -hmm. do did Prime or do you think Prime has something to do with 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 the Prime YouTubers taking their videos down? talking about that situation no no they, those those people took their videos down first of all i think they put them up kind of quick mm -hmm. they may have said some stuff or whatever um i you know that that they didn't maybe wouldn't have said you know after they would have thought about it or would have said it different i'm not sure why why or maybe it was just out of respect to, to crazy bags you know i don't i don't really know one of them um I think it's Chuck and Nene. She took us down because she got a lot of flack because she had put up a video before she even knew anything about them, about um, training, men and women training or something like that. So when that video was out and then that happened, everybody thought that she was talking about them. So she took her video down. She has another video talking about all of that. Now, um, now Trucker, but, Trucker Nene, she's, is she a driver of Prime as well? She is. Mm -hmm. All right, so guys, listen. If you guys want to know, if if you guys want to know more about Trucker Nene, definitely go over to her channel. Uh, this is all opinions based on Miss Bernadette. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't necessarily reflect the opinions and and thoughts of my channel. I just want to just get that out there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> had to let that get hey, that little I, disclosure out yeah, there. Yeah, I had to get that disclosure out there because, you know, like I said, me and my co-hosts, we talked about the situation. Uh, heard, we I talked heard, about though. the situation last week, maybe. Mm -hmm. We talked about the situation last week and one of the uh, one of the prime drivers, uh, one of the trainers, he did a reaction video and I was kind of I, I seen the video and I was kind of just looking at it like, huh? I, I didn't know what to take from that video. So when I went back oh, to, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. When I, I don't know what to take from that either. When I when <laughs> I went back to when I went back to you know put a you know put my comment on it you know just to you know not not to not to start anything but just to get an understanding of it. He took it down. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and I was, you know, I was, I was shook that, that he took it down. But my, my co-host, she reached out to him 
and you know she asked him like yo what what was that video about and you know the conversation between the two that i got out of it was the fact that you know he said you know it was said to the fact that um you know he did it for his uh for his subscribers and i just wanted I, like i said before you know in the in the in the previous video it wasn't about drama you know it right. was it wasn't right. about drama i mean you know it was a situ it was a situation that happened an unfortunate situation that happened but then again like i said if nobody if him or anybody else hasn't talked about it then nobody wouldn't have known and other people such as myself right. that does that that does you know that does videos like this wouldn't have had a wouldn't have had an opinion on it you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so it wasn't yep. it, it wasn't it wasn't an attack on him or anything like that my stance was hey don't let nobody fuck with your money you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. i mean you know you 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 was a popular youtuber and you was promoting the company religiously i mean you know it, it was it was prime this prime that prime this prime that and then you got in the situation with with one of your trainees that messed up your money you know and and yeah and i was like look don't let nobody mess up your money i mean being that you was out with a you being that you was out with your uh male trainer, there wasn't no hanky panky going on right there, right? It it shouldn't have been. Right? No, no. I mean that wasn't even a that was the first thing from my mind and I'm sure his too, because I mean, we were rolling and and like I said, they benefit from having a um a trainer, a trainee on the truck and so he had his personal goals, you know, that he was trying to accomplish while he, while the time I would be spending with him, and I had my goals, and we were just, we was just doing what we had to do, um, and he was just like a big brother to me. He still is. It's not, it's not a day that, you know, I don't feel like I could call him and ask him a question. He's always available and always just awesome, you know. And I believe Crazy Bags was the same way and and has been the same way with his trainees, but that was his first female trainee, and I don't know why. You know, he chose not to train women in the past. I don't, you know, I don't know what his decisions were. But like he said, when he made the decision to do it, he, he you know, he, he second guessed it, but he went ahead and did it anyway. And this was the outcome. I don't, I know, I, you know, I don't wish anything. I wish that he hadn't Ow. come out with his video so fast mm -hmm. and would have gave it some time to settle before he would have told what happened. Because it was a lot of emotion in both of their videos when they came, you know, when they came out with their videos. Both of them were very emotional about exactly. what happened. Exactly. And it made us emotional. In turn, you get a whole bunch of emotion out there in YouTube and it's a mess. Exactly. And then, like I said, you got, you know, you, you, and you got other YouTubers that's, that's making the, making videos on assumptions on what really had happened and what really not happened. I mean, it was all speculatory. Right. You know what I'm saying, right. but I mean the girl you had on, she had a pretty, she had put, tried to put it together pretty good, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I listened to her and you as y'all talked about it. I mean, the bottom line is this: you get a, a man and a woman on a truck, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it ain't just sexual, but you can get on this truck and get violent. I mean, you know, people argue and get escalated out in truck stops. You see it all the time, and so it's it's hard. It's not an easy thing to be on a truck with somebody you don't know for that length of time, man or woman. So, you know, the fact that we get trained and we get trucks and we get to move on is amazing to me. It's just the whole thing is amazing that this doesn't happen, you know, more often and that they actually do produce drivers. Exactly. You know? All right. So you are, so you rocking out with prime in a flatbed division. What's the, uh, you will talk about the, about the pay and the benefits and the miles a week that you get. Yeah, the um, <clears throat> I'm doing good. You know, I, I try to put my numbers out there on my on my channel, but I don't want my channel to be about that. You know, Crazy Bags was big on that. He's like I said, one of the reasons I came out. Um, and I mean, went ahead and came out the gate least, and I didn't go company first. People tell you, oh, go company first. You know, I was confident enough to believe after seeing a lot of his videos that I could do it. And pretty much everything he would say about fixed costs, 
um, truck payments and all that stuff is exactly what I'm experiencing. And so it's not a surprise to me. Um, I'm doing really well. I put my goals out there. I try to the truck. I'm, my goal is to do 4000 between 4000 and 5000 a week for the truck. I pay myself twelve fifty, and I leave the rest of my business account, and it's and it's growing. You know, I've had a bad week or two during the holiday where I went in a hole because I went home. Mm-hmm. You know, typical stuff. I was able to come right back, get out, and keep moving. Um, and I mean, the, the, the freight is out there. Um, like I said, I'm in North Dakota right now. You know, this winter weather and all that kind of stuff is a challenge, but I'm getting through that. So, I mean, I don't have nothing but nice things to say about how, working how, or leasing through Brown. How is it? How, how is it? How, how, how is uh, flatbed life in the wintertime up in uh, up in Colorado? <laughs> yeah, it's cold as hell. I mean, <laughs> it's cold out here. And trying to tarp and, you know, I, this was a hard week for me. Um, just being up here. Uh, taking off my tarps, rolling them up, you know, to take the straps. I had to actually cut my straps off because they just were frozen solid. Wow. And um, so that's something I didn't, I didn't train for that, you know, um, because it was summer. So this is new. Uh, flatbed ain't flatbed ain't for the weary. That's for sure. The weak or the weary. You say but, it ain't for the weak or the weary. It's not for the weak minded, <laughs> huh? No, no, you got to really want to be out here um, and you got to enjoy it. And I do for the most part, like I said, you know, I wanted to be outside the truck. I don't like um, just the sitting and the waiting at that reefer. You know, that was another part of the training. I just couldn't stand it. It was probably me, too, because I don't like to be, you know, just closed in like that. It was always just waiting. You know, flatbed is a little bit different um, because you're busy, you know. That's what's up. That is what's up. All right. So is there any um, is there any tips on how you could become successful? Uh, that you can uh, get these drivers out here? Yeah, my biggest tip is just to get through your training. I mean, if Prime didn't have the issues with the training department, that place would be, you know, uh, the best the best place I've ever worked. I mean, and, I, and I'm and i not trying to be singing the praises of Prime or whatever. People saying that, you know, Prime has got a, it's like a cult. I'm, that's my next video is Prime a cult. Um, somebody did some, some, somebody did a video if i'm not mistaken another youtuber did a video on on well not prime but they they changed the name and it says that uh mega carrier was a cult <laughs> <laughs> people say that to me even when i'm in the truck stops and stuff oh you you part of the cult and you know, i'm like what <laughs> so i finally realized that that's what they're saying you know that's what they're talking about but you know, Prime is, I, I don't, I don't want to call it a cult, but I feel like I'm like an evangelist when I'm with because after the training, mm-hmm. you get your truck, that's when it opens up for you. And, and that's what my channel is really about because they give you a truck. I mean, they ain't giving it to you. You know, you lease a truck or you go work for the company. I don't know much about the company side, but just the fact that they, that you, you lease the truck, I didn't put no money down, none of that kind of stuff. So with nothing coming out of my own pocket but, but time and sweat, from training, I get to get my own truck put out here, getting great freight. Um, they they do everything you know for you as far as setting up your LLC, you know certain things like that. You know how long that takes if you try to start your own business by yourself. Mm-hmm. If I, I, I yeah I I, I did it. yeah I I yeah it took me a long time to start my uh start my um my what do you call it uh damn it man. My uh, roadside business. It took me a little. It took yeah. me a little bit to get my LLC, my uh, my e uh, my EIN number. EIN yeah. number, all of that stuff. You know how all long it took me? Twenty four, twenty four hours. They, I mean, that's how systematic it is. There, if you want this, you get in that system that they have, and you get to the end, and there's no telling what you could do. So, in, a, in less than a week, I had an LLC, an IEN. A business winning, account, a truck, winning, and some winning, winning. On, you can't ask for much more than that. You know, uh, that, that's how I feel about it because I've been there, I've been working for other people in other places, um, and I ain't never experienced nothing like this in my life. That's what's so, up. If I sound like an evangelist, or if, I, if somebody wants, wants it to seem like it's a cult, 
so be it. I'm just going to be a part of it. And then when you get to prom, and I don't know if you've ever visited the terminal or, you know, what your experience is with them, but this person that, this guy um, that that started this company, he had a vision. You know, this this place is awesome. I mean, they have basketball courts, cafeteria, um, just anything that you could think of, laundry facilities. This is like a campus. Like you, It's like the barracks. It's like the military. It's set up for this. And, and you become a part of that. And so to me, that was a great experience because just like that man had a vision and we are part of his vision, I got my own. So I'm not going to be a part of his vision that long. But I was, I'm, I'm, I'm glad he gave me the opportunity to be a part of his vision. You say you ain't, you, you say you, I got ain't, my own. you say you ain't going to be a part of that vision for too much longer, huh? <laughs> no, no, because you know it's, it's a good starting point. It really is, and and and, and he realizes that he's giving you an opportunity like that. When I got my CDL, when I passed my CDL and I came back into the room, I didn't know that I passed. The instructor came over to me and he said, "Your life just changed." And I looked he at him. Said, I'm like, he, said what? he said it just like that, huh? Just like that. And to me, you know, I'm 49 years old. My my life ain't gonna change but so much, but it did, you know. And the, the fact that he said that, that's because that's what he believes. And the, it's almost like he has a call on his life to go and push somebody else to believe that they got a call on theirs. Because you don't often tell somebody your life just changed because you put a piece of paper in their hand. He didn't put a degree in my hand. He ain't put no certificate in my hand. He put my CDL in my hand, and he felt like that was going to change my life. And that's why I started my channel, not because YouTube is for Prime and Prime is for YouTube, because I believe that if somebody put a CDL in their hand, their life can change. Their life change, just like my life. My my life change, maybe for the better, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, you know it changed for the better. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what's up. Hey, and. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I'm 50 years old. My life changed for the better. You older, your life changed for the better. But imagine somebody 22, 25, 30, that get that piece of paper in their hand. Imagine how their life can change they, they, if they, they keep their mind right. If, if, the, and that's what it's all about coming out here, keeping, you, keeping your mind right, man. Because if, if your mind ain't right, then you, you, it's, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Bernadette, man, yep. check this out. I, I got some, um, I got some questions for you. All right, I got, okay. I got some questions. Can I, can I say one more thing? Go, go one ahead. About crazy bag. Go, yeah, go yeah, ahead. This, this is on my mind. Crazy bag, you know, whatever mistakes they made or whatever that he went on, he goes on, and you say it messed up his money, and it may very well have, but I bet you, crazy bags ain't broke. Oh and yeah! Oh no! Thing. No 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 no! I I don't think no! I don't think the man's broke no. at all. That's why we call him money bags. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Money I, I don't bags. I don't so think my, he's my broke point at all. Is it could if it could have happened it could have happened to a lot of other people. And if that if they job in today or tomorrow, they don't have nothing to show. For. Exactly. They don't have anything saved. They don't have anything put to the side. They just been running and spending and running and spending. And so to me. As sad as that is about him, he gonna be okay. Money, 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 about his well being because he's fine. However, if it ended for me tomorrow or ended for you tomorrow or whoever else is listening, how would your situation be? You know, we gotta prepare for the future. We gotta have a purpose and we gotta set money aside. We gotta be business oriented and be entrepreneurs um, in the mindset because if it ends tomorrow, you could get hurt. You know, anything can happen. You got to be prepared for all of that. Exactly, exactly. And I'm glad that, like I said before, I, I, I said it, I will continue to say it. Don't let nobody mess up your money, though. For real. For right. real, for real. Don't don't let nobody mess up your money because. But don't let that, that nobody be you. That's, what, that's my biggest enemy is most of the time. Not somebody on the outside, but somebody right here on the inside is you. The exactly. biggest enemy. Holding ourselves back. So, thinking we can't do something. So check this out, Bernadette, before I let you go. I got some questions for you, man. I got some questions for All you. All right. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Sleep hot or sleep cold? Huh? Yeah. Sleep hot. Wait, say Sleep hot? Sleep hot or sleep cold? Sleep hot. You 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 like it hot. All right, all right. Cash or card? Cash. Cash. Ice cream cone or waffle? 
waffle. Ice cream scoop or a shake? Shake. McDonald's or Burger King? McDonald's. All right, I got one for you. Mary J. Blige or Faith Evans? Faith. All day. Faith got one. Faith has finally <laughs> got one. She has finally got one because everybody else Faith. like like uh like Mary J. Bly. She finally got I one. I love Mary too. I do, but Faith is the name. You know, Faith without works is dead. That's why I like that one. That's what's up. I got another one for you though. Aretha Franklin okay. or Diana Ross. Now we you you up there around Man, you you up on. there with me now, so which which one of these divas? <laughs> Aretha all day. Aretha all day. All right, I got. Oh, okay, I, I got another one for you. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Prince or Michael Jackson? Ah. Oh, mm-hmm. That's a hard one. Mm-hmm. I'm going. I'm going with MJ. Uh, you gotta go with. You, you gotta go with MJ. Yeah, I gotta. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Apples or oranges? Oranges. What do you say, pop or soda? Soda. Uh, I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, now I see. Now I know that you. Uh, I, I know that you. Uh, are older. Uh, uh, older young lady. You, 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 uh huh. You see how I did that, older young lady. You, you, oh, you, young lady, I'll take that. I'll you, take that. You're, you're an older young lady, and I know that you uh do some good food. I know what's up. So let me ask you this: mashed potatoes or baked potatoes? Mm, baked potato. Baked potatoes. Do you cook on? Do you cook on a gas stove or an electric stove? Gas. Gas stove all day, huh? <laughs> Now I know that Prime got you up there. I know Prime got you up there by by bus. I take it right. Yes. But do you prefer Greyhound or a plane? Plane. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably never take another Greyhound bus as long as I live. I hear you. Netflix mm-hmm. and chill or Hulu and cool. Say that again. Netflix and chill or Hulu and cool? Netflix and chill. Netflix and chill. All right. Uh, all right. All right. All right. All right. Let me ask you this. Uh, PayPal or Cash App? Cash App. I'm, I'm a PayPal type of guy, but ca- Cash App is, is a little bit quicker, cash- though, for real. Yeah, Cash App is the best thing since sliced bread, especially if you got a kid in college. That was like a lifesaver. Because, I mean, cause I used to have to go to the Walmart and, and try to Walmart the Walmart the money and uh-huh. put it in her bank account. And once Cash App came to play, it was just three seconds and then she got the money. Now, you know what? we Now, you know what? Now, we, we me and you was both from the old school. And we know right. how it was different way back when before all this technology stuff how was it how was it for you to adapt to all of this new technology stuff i'm i I embrace it i think it's awesome i mean i think the way we grew up was cool too but these these kids now got so many things to they in their fingertips right right there you know, and that's the part that amazes me, you know, even with driving the truck, the technology that was available to us um, to make this job a lot easier. I can't imagine doing this this job with a map book, an atlas, and, and a, a quarter to call somebody on a pay phone. I couldn't have did this job 30 years ago or 20 years ago. At least you at, at least you're being honest. Now don't get yeah. there's there's a lot of there, there's a lot of old school drivers that really hates us new school drivers for real. I know. There there's rightfully a lot, so I think. Yeah, there's a lot of them <laughs> that really hates us, man. Because you know, right now we're 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 driving the automatic. We have yep. we have navigation to get us from point A to point B, and we got all the technology that's inside of the truck. That we don't even need to, you know, get out, make phone calls, and all like that, man. They yeah. they hate us. They yeah. hate us. Is there what? Is there any recommendations that you wish you would have known before joining 
uh, Prime, though, for real? Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't think anything could have made it any easier, to be honest. I was all set to go to Stevens Transportation, and mm -hmm. um, I met two guys that that worked at Prime, and they just threw me on it. And so I went with Prime instead. At the last minute, I switched from Stevens to Prime, and I'm so glad uh, that I did. But I don't care where you go; uh, it's a challenge to learn, to train, to humble yourself, and become a student again. All of those things are not easy, um, but once you get that behind you, just the sky's the limit. So I don't think anything could have made it any easier. It's, it's, it's experience. You just got to go through it. Some things you just got to go through. Well, that's what's up, Bernadette. Yo, I want to thank you for coming on. I really do appreciate you coming on and sharing your experience with us, man. Is there any um, is there any way that these uh, the new chats can uh, could get a hold of you? Yeah. Um, my, my my YouTube channel, Bernadette, LaShawn, LaShawn. I know, right? Um, <laughs> I, I I know, right? You I, you know you you got my name and you just you just butchered it, butchered it up and gave you know took, <laughs> took it for yourself and instead of instead of L A S H A U N you took the U out through you you put it in your right hand and threw it out the window. <laughs> You, you actually, threw, my you, mother, my mother did that. I didn't do that, and that, and that's my middle name. Um, Lashawn is my middle name, so I just use Bernadette Lashawn. Um, uh, journey on purpose, because this is a journey that we own, and hopefully we can be on it together. Um, but we got to do it with purpose, and we can't just be out here just lollygagging. And we got to get this money. That's what's up. That's what's up. Everybody, this is her. This is her YouTube page right here. Now. Like I said before, I, I always say the Prime has the book of YouTube, but there's <laughs> different there's different reasons and different variants why people uh, make a YouTube uh, a YouTube page for their trucking journey, and it could be for a various uh, for various reasons. So shout out to you, Miss Bernadette, Journey on Purpose. Make sure you guys go and check her out. Uh, make sure y'all subscribe to her. You know she she got some good she got some good stuff on here. Um, like I said, one of her videos popped up, and that's how I was able to uh, reach out to her and uh, talk to her now. So that's what's up. So Bernadette, journey on purpose. I'm gonna let you get back at it. Sounds like uh, sounds like you're still driving and you got some miles to kick. So I appreciate you yep. being on the on the uh, on the podcast with me today. And, uh, yeah, you're part of the uh, LOM community. Don't be no stranger. Well, I appreciate it. It was great. Thank you so much. And I love what you're doing. I do. Thank you. Thank you. And I will continue doing it. And, and I, I, man, look, sh salute, look, look, salute to you, 50-year-old flat better, <laughs> female, black, female. So <laughs> salute to you. And a mom, too. So, well, her, she's a grown woman now, but still. She's a mom. She's in college. Yeah. So she still needs yeah. her mom. And 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 again, my condolences out to your beautiful family. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. You're very welcome. All right, don't be no stranger, man. I, I got your phone number locked. So your your phone oh, number. So I'm, your, I'm gonna pass by you. I'm gonna I'm yeah, your, I'm yeah, your phone I'm number. Man. Your <laughs> phone number's locked. So you know, like I said, this this trucking world is small. So. All right, guys. Yeah. Well, that's uh, Miss Bernadette LaShawn. <laughs> Journey on purpose. Yeah. Journey on purpose. Definitely uh, go check out her channel and uh, like, subscribe, and comment and all that good stuff. If you guys want to come on, reach out to me. Lockout Men Podcast at gmail.com. Yo, I'm, uh, this is the platform for you guys. I'm here for you guys. You got anything to say? You got anything to share? You got anything that you want to get out? Come on to this side of the street. Now look. Now look. I I I I don't I, I don't promote, but I'm just saying. I don't promote, but my man across the street. Now if y'all with the foolery, definitely go over there across the street, man, because my man got the platform for you every Saturday. Every Saturday. Every Saturday, check my man out. So if y'all with the foolery, definitely go over there and shout out to him because he he uh, he 
He commented on my page. I really do appreciate that, bro. Thank you very much. Uh, Bernadette, thank you for coming on. Guys, thank you for watching. And we are out. We're going to the Nets shipper and receiver. You guys take it easy, and I'll come back at y'all with another video. Peace. All right. Bernadette? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. That Thank was, you. Thank that was, you. Uh, that was an awesome, awesome, awesome interview. What got you, what got you interested in doing this? This is amazing. Uh, I did to just, you know, do this podcast thing and uh, get my get my content out on more, uh, you know, more platforms. And then I just started opening myself up like, yo, you know, a lot of people – a lot of new jacks that's coming in the that's coming in the industry, they really like what I'm doing. So why not give them an opportunity to come on and 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 share, you know, their experiences and stuff like that. So here, so here I am, Lockout Man Podcast. I'm right here. Awesome, I love it. I love it. That's a, I mean, it's so creative. And even looking at you on the truck, I'm like, dang, how he get his truck to look like a studio? I can hardly keep mine straight. Yeah, I got the I got the green screen. But <laughs> I got I'm I'm in a new I'm in a new truck now, so I, I got a I, I got a lot I got a lot of work to do. <laughs>